Hey everyone, so this is the first in my next set of videos. Uh, this one is going to be on finding the Maclaurin series of 1 over 1 minus x. Uh, so if you haven't already looked at my slides or just did a quick review, uh, please do that. And uh, you'll just get a quick refresh on what Maclaurin series and Taylor series are. Um, but let's start off with finding the Maclaurin series of 1 over 1 minus x. So I've already taken a few steps here and I've written out the function that I have and along with f to the nth derivative evaluated 0 over n factorial times x to the n. So this is my Maclaurin series. Uh, the Maclaurin series is always evaluated at 0, right? So my derivatives are always at 0, uh, whereas in Taylor series it's just any number. So you can think of Maclaurin series as a specific kind of Taylor series. All right, so we're trying to find this thing here. And we have f of x, so let's start by taking derivatives. So f of x, and I'm just going to write it in a bit of a convenient form here, 1 minus x to the negative 1. Uh, so since we're trying to find this uh, series, you may already know that it looks very similar to this series. So don't be so surprised if this is what we get at, at, at the end of it. Um, but this is just to show you that math does in fact work out. And the power series, uh, the Maclaurin series are a specific type of power series. And of course they overlap um, on, for, on this function, for example. All right, so first derivative, what do we get? Uh, so f prime of x is equal to negative, well, negative one from the exponent times 1 minus x to the negative 2 times negative 1 from chain rule, right? I need to take the derivative of this in here as well. So this becomes, neg uh, sorry, just 1 minus x, and that bracket is 2, the negative 2. So not quite enough for us to see a pattern yet, so let's keep going. So now I'm taking the derivative of this thing here, and so it'd be negative 2 times 1 minus x to the negative 3, times negative 1. So the negative 1 here cancels with the negative out here, and I'm left with 2 times 1 minus x to the negative 3. Heck, one more. So f triple prime of x, this would be equal to negative 3 times 1 minus x to the negative 4, of course negative 1 from the chain rule, and I get 3 times 2 times 1 minus x to the negative 3, uh, sorry, negative 4 negative 4. So you can see what happens here. Every single time I take a derivative, the exponent comes down and the negative here cancels with the negative in the chain rule. So this is true for every derivative I take. So I'm really quickly able to say, well, the fourth derivative is just 4 times 3. Uh, sorry, that's a times and not a minus sign. Times 2 times 1 minus x and this negative 4 becomes a negative 5. Great. Uh, so we could actually generalize this and say what would happen in the case that I'm trying to find the nth derivative of f. Well, the nth derivative is just, well, from the fourth one, we've got 4 times 3 times 2. From the third one, we've got 3 times 2. Second one, we get 2, etc. So you can kind of guess what's going to happen. The more derivatives I get, um, the more of these numbers will pop out in front. And in fact, if I follow the same form, it's n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 2, and these are all multiplication, times 1 minus x to the negative, with in brackets, n plus 1. Why is it n plus 1? Well, there's a 4 here, there's a 5 here, there's a 3 here, there's a 4 here, go figure. All right, so this is equal to n factorial, right? It's like n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 2, and I could just multiply in 1 for granted, right? Because uh, 1 times anything gives you back that same anything. And of course, I can't just ignore this other part. This other part gives me 1 minus x to the negative n plus 1. So there we go. That is the nth derivative of x of the function 1 over 1 minus x. So I'm just going to do a quick divider here on the side. And we need to evaluate this thing at 0. 0 because it's a Maclaurin series. 
So f of n evaluated at 0, well, that's just n factorial times 1 minus 0, which is 1. And so it's 1 to the power of negative n plus 1. Of course, anything to the power, sorry, 1 to the power of anything gives me back 1, so it's just n factorial. So like I said before, it's absolutely no surprise that we get n equals 0 to the infinity. The Maclaurin series is just n factorial, well, over n factorial x to the n. So we have exactly what we had back in the power series. Right. And we know this converges for x between negative 1 and 1. So what does this also mean? For example, when we did arctan, when we say found the uh, power series of arctan, that is also the Maclaurin series for arctan. Uh, so what was it? Power series for arctan. for arctan of x. And so arctan of x, well, this is just equal to uh, the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared, right, so dx. And this was equal to uh, the integral, when I find the sum of this thing, negative x, sorry, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n. And this is n equals 0 to infinity. Um, there we go, we get that. Right, so when we go through this and we go through this exercise and we solve for it, we get uh, this is equal to the sum from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. Right, remember we had a c and the c is 0 because when x is 0, we can solve for c and c is 0, right? This thing becomes 0. Arctan of 0 is 0. And there we go. So anyway, this is actually also the Maclaurin series for arctan of x. Uh, so a lot of the series we looked at when we took a look at the power series, they also happen to be the Maclaurin series of x. Um, it's just that we were able to manipulate it nicely so that we didn't have to take the derivatives. Um, but if you did try to take the derivatives of arctan of x, and you try to plug it back into the formula that I've given you for Maclaurin series, you would get the exact same thing. Um, it's a bit of a tedious exercise, so I'm not going to ask you to do it here, um, but it's, it's the same thing. All right, so this is uh, just a quick example on how to take and find the Maclaurin series for something a little bit more difficult than just say e to the x or sine x or cos x. Uh, in my next video, I'm going to talk about uh, Taylor series and how you can manipulate that from some of the Maclaurin series. All right, great.